Dawn of Ragnarok is a high power level expansion, so it makes sense that it contains some of the best new items in the game. I want to go over them and I will also tell you how to get them, starting with what I think is the best new Ed gear weapon. There are four variants of this new weapon type, you get three by playing through the main story of the DLC and the fiery war song. The final one is a reward for killing all three roaming bosses in Swartalfheim. I found one over here on the map. The other one over here and the final one over here. So basically one in every region, just go to a nearby viewpoint, then zoom in on the map to find these icons and after killing all three of them you want to go to a blacksmith to get the weapon. And a fun fact by the way is that if you take out all three roaming bosses they will be back in the arena so we can fight them again which I really like. Now because it's the hardest ad gear to obtain you would think that it's also the best one in the DLC. Weapon is set on fire when surrounded by more than three enemies so handy in raid locations for example when battling multiple targets but then the moment you're surrounded by three or less enemies the fire effect on the weapon disappears. So yeah this is actually only nice in very rare situations as you will be fighting a lot of bosses in the DLC 2 plus as you maybe already noticed multiple enemies ignore fire damage making this weapon even worse when you use it in Swartalfheim. So while it's totally the coolest looking Ed gear, and by the way all these new weapons change in terms of look when you upgrade them from mythical to the new divine quality at the blacksmith, but now I would argue that Thor Grimm's Dying Breath is way better. This one on a heavy critical hit knocks enemies on the ground with no cooldown, so then they need to recover, become an easy target for a stomp attack, and even these roaming bosses and some harder enemies can drop on the ground too with this perk. So if you play around the critical hits then this one is handy in many situations. And there are by the way way more incentives to focus on crit chance thanks to the best new armor set they added with this DLC, Raid Mars Blessing. And by the way real quick I will go more in depth on the new Ed gear weapons as well in a future video to tell you how to best use them. Of course subscribe if you haven't already for more of Valhalla content and leaving a like on this video would really help me out so thanks for that. So this armor set starts as a cursed variant. You find it over here on the map in a dwarven shelter, look for the wealth nodes and then you will be able to claim it. But you will need 5 nullify runes, which you find thanks to these special icons here on the map. You have to do a small puzzle, it's not too hard, and they get one of the runes. There are 5 of these puzzles in the world, and they can put each rune on one of the cursed pieces and when you do they immediately transfer into the blessed set. Now I do think that this is the reason why this cooler golden look is not in the transmog yet so I really hope they add it later on. In the meantime though wearing this armor is still pretty nice because of the set bonuses. It namely has a pretty unique effect when wearing the full set. You namely damage nearby enemies and push them back after eating a ration. The damage of this is decent, it's not really to ride home about and yes you don't want to waste all your rations just for this okay effect. So this is not really great but the first set bonus makes everything right. With this you actually lower the healings of a ration but you get 20% health back on a crit with no cooldown. So again if you play around the crit chance you can go from zero to full health in no time and also just stay in the fight as well while enemies are trying to take you out. It's pretty insane. And this even with the secret wooden stick weapon that is pretty bad cannot be upgraded but yeah I still get a ton of health back. You can get this weapon by the way over here on the map on this bridge near the bench. No icon indicating that it's there but you can get it there. It increases stun at night, so it's basically useless. Again, you cannot upgrade it, but still you can make it work with the perk from this amazing armor. And because it's the first set bonus, you can just use two or three pieces of this set and then bring in two other gear pieces that, for example, enhance your crit chance. The Viper bow as a crit chance bow is, of course, also great. I also put the major rune where I get a small portion of my health on a crit back too 
so that of course stacks. I think it's pretty good with the new Fenrir's Incisor, as this dagger is all about the offhand attack, reducing the stamina cost, so you can basically do this special attack longer. Apply fire on the blade too, to deal even more damage, and you got a very solid tactic against a lot of the frost giants in Swartalfheim, although this left hand attack works against a lot of other enemies too, so totally grab it from a wealth chest over here on the map. You need to complete a puzzle, but it's totally doable. So yeah, what I'm also using is the Shield of the Draugr upgrade for the power of Rebirth, because then I will not be interrupted while doing this left hand attack. And again, I get my health back by using this armor. So yeah, I'm already thinking of a cool build. We'll totally dive more into that in the future. You do not really need a good build though for this next weapon, the Azir Eye, which a brand new hunter bow you can get in the arena. And... Yes, it does look pretty cool after upgrading it to the divine quality. But it's mostly the perk that shines. You namely get some adrenaline after a fully charged headshot. But the best part is that you can get this adrenaline also when shooting a fully charged headshot with an ability. And this works insanely well with the new knockdown arrow that on level 2 not only push enemies away with the shock effect but also has this explosion appear when enemies fall on the ground stunning surrounding targets. Like with this bow you can just spam this ability with every shot as long as you charge it and aim for the head. Like in my experience I get more than one adrenaline back so even if you miss one you can still build up the adrenaline again by spamming this ability. It's really insane and totally the strongest new tactic in the DLC. And you can by the way find the books of knowledge for this knockback arrow over here on the map in Swartalfheim. And the other one is over here on the map. Of course, you need to do some puzzles to get it, but it's not that hard. So totally get them, of course, for this insane combo. And you will also need 2,800 arena tokens to buy the bow. And before you really go nuts for these arena items, it's smart to find all the bows in the world, which are noted with the scroll icons, as you see right here. So they can switch up these debuffs and more easily apply four at a time, which like the sweet spot. This gives you 400 tokens per challenge. Like it's still a grind for sure, but it's totally worth it for this weapon. And you can also find the Odin All Father armor in the arena shop. Although I would argue that you only really need two items of this set if you are just playing around for the perks. Like the extra headshot damage when you equip the full set is not really great, while the first set bonus bonus gives you adrenaline on a headshot and weak point hit which is pretty crazy. So yeah, I immediately thought, okay, let's combine it with that new Hunter bow, but it's actually kind of an overkill because you already get a ton of adrenaline back with one of the two options. You can basically see this as a way to still spam abilities without losing adrenaline, but now with the Odin of Father armor, you can use other bows instead. While the Azer Eye basically gives you the option to use any other armor set instead of the Odin armor and still spam abilities. Also, the cutting shot skill is insane with these combinations as you will get even more adrenaline back now. It's really an OP playstyle. The only downside is that these abilities are slightly different in the so-called real world. So you will then not have the shock effect. So then you have to line up enemies to still insta-kill them. So yeah, it's still possible to spam abilities, although it's totally not as strong as in Swartalfheim. And speaking of getting adrenaline back, there's a brand new axe that has a 50% chance to refill an adrenaline slot on a critical hit, but with a 15 second cooldown. This is by the way the same perk as we find on the Frost Rune Helix Flail, that has been at Reda a couple of times. Only that weapon gives you a visual cue when the perk triggers, which really helps. Now you have to pay attention to your adrenaline bar, but that doesn't make the axe less powerful, especially because having no weapon in your offhand has been significantly improved with skills like the riposte, where after a parry, you do an insta crit, so then you immediately with this axe have a chance to reveal an adrenaline bar. And then also after doing one ability, you can use a free one from the the opposite ability wheel. So using this axe as your only melee weapon is totally a solid choice. To get this one though, we need to clear all the dwarven icons followed by the wolf icons that appear after helping these dwarves. And I will leave a link to a video with all the locations in the video description. Every wolf icon gives you one piece of the new Jotun mantle set. And after getting all five of them, 
you want to head over here on the map. If you then wear this full set, you can get through a portal where you will find a boss. The Jotun armor set is pretty bad, so during this fight, switch it out for an armor set you actually prefer. And then after killing this boss, which by the way also once again appears in the arena, yes please, Either way, after this boss, you get this pretty good axe. Now, if we go back to the arena once more, we have to talk about the mods. Like, I still need to try all of them, but I can already recommend this one with the gain a burst of speed after a perfect dodge. Because the speed buff you get is insane and also quite long and there's no cooldown. It's really a game changer. It's totally worth getting. Of course, to put it on a weapon, the weapon has to be of the divine quality. Of course, if you found any good things in the Valhalla DLC, then totally let me know in the comments down below and subscribe for way more videos on Dawn of Ragnarok if you haven't already. A like on the video would really help me out and totally check out my previous video on important info that is totally handy to know when you travel through Sword of Heim. For now though, I will speak to you in the next one. Goodbye.